place to live, a place to play, a place for health and happiness. We are the children of the Daily Splat, and it's for the ashes that we're fighting. No job knocking today, no money on the break. No job knocking today, no money on the break. Unemployment, 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 unemployment! We're at the Apollo Arts Theatre um, in Belfast, rehearsing Joyriders by Christina Reid. Apollo Arts started in 2016 and our first production was Blood Brothers and um, that year we were very passionate about doing Joyriders in the Belfast Fela Festival which we did last August and um, from then um, the Opera House had come to see it and so this time a year later then uh, we we're in the Opera House on the 22nd of October to the 26th of October two shows a day um, with Joyriders um, in the baby grand at the Opera House so it's it's very exciting that we've moved on so much. Well, I read the play a few years ago while I was at school and it didn't really stick with me. I mean, Sandra kind of did because I see a lot of myself in her, but the play itself didn't stick with me. And then when I came to do Joyriders last year with Apollo Arts, um, we looked at different footage from back then when it was filmed and the stuff that these characters had been through was absolutely shocking so it did stay with me a lot more this time round and it made it a lot easier for me to delve into the character. Joyriders has become this iconic play. It was set in 1986 in Divis Flats and the wonderful thing is um, Christina Reid um, who wrote the play went into Divis Flats and worked with the people of Divis at that time um, and, and wrote and used language that they were using which was really fascinating. One night a group of kids from a youth training scheme in West Belfast were brought, literally brought in to see Shadow of a Gunman and they'd never been in a theatre before. And it was a brilliant electric night of theatre because they had no preconceived idea of behaviour in the theatre. They treated it like the cinema. Uh, they were told they couldn't smoke. They had to be told, you know, to stop eating crisps and sort of chatting across to each other. But they were wonderful watching the play and they cheered when, um, you know, when Donald kissed Minnie Paul. You know, it, it, was, they, it was just an electric evening theatre with these kids. And I was, um, and then there was one guy, he was eventually put out because, you know, he kept commenting on what was going on stage and they got very cross with him, I reckon, which I thought it was a shame, and he got put out. When they came out afterwards, I was asked to talk to them as um, the writer in residence. And um, so we had a conversation and he said, um, well, we came to see you, are you going to come and see us? And I went, all right then, come up to the YTP and see us. And I said, so what do you do there? And he said, I'm a cook. Only man who can cook in West Belfast. Right? And I went up with Patrick Sanford and uh, two other people. And it was extraordinary. And he cooked us steak chasseur for lunch. And he'd gone out and got a bottle of red wine because that's what you drink with steak chasseur. And everybody made fun of him about the cooking, but he was a wonderful cook. And this all went into Joyriders, you know, it's like, are there no chips with that? People kept saying to him, you know, palm frites, and he mispronounced all the, you know, ragout, he would make ragout, and I would say, stew, Arthur, you know, and they were sort of, and this, and so he was fascinating, and all the kids I met there were fascinating. I was very angry about schemes, I was very angry about the fact that they would go through all this, and do it. and there was a girl there who Sandra's very much based on. The girls were working on knitting machines, uh, and she wanted to work in the cars and she wasn't allowed because she was a girl. So that's where all that came. So eventually the play came out of a sort of sense of anger and justice and just sheer awe about how brilliant they all were. One minute past, that's another 15p off my wages. It's 10 past. I'd have to make a new watch, I just want hopeless. What's the matter with you? Nothing. You still moping about that stupid play? It wasn't stupid. Look, why does it matter if you get shot? If you get shot, you get shot, and that's all there is to it. Is your mad worse? Is that what's the matter? It's our Johnny. I think he's on the glue again. He was never off it. He was. He's a no-hopper. He always has been. He's all I've got. He's your brother. The way you talk about him, you think he was your son. He's nobody's son. My dad's God knows where. And my ma. Well, she's better off dead for all she knows. Are you going up to see her the night? I might. I'll come with you if you like. 
What for? Well, I might as well have nothing better to do. There's not much to do there either. It's just sits and stares at the walls all day. Does she never speak? Every now and again, she opens her mouth as if she's about to say something. Then she just screams. It's awful. I give her an injection, she wakes up and she just sits and stares again. I play Maureen and she lives in Divis Flats and she looks after her little brother Johnny who's a glue sniffer and gets into a lot of trouble. And I'm doing a youth programme where I meet Sandra, Tommy and Arthur. Maureen doesn't like dirty talk and doesn't like trouble. She is really by the book. It's more of Sandra's done joyriding and Arthur and Tommy would probably be more into that than what my character would be. I'm the one that would probably keep everybody together. It wouldn't bother me. I just want a job. Any sort of job. I don't care what it is. I want to earn my own money. Never have to stand in no more queues pleading poverty. Never have to fill out no more forms. Where's your father? I don't know. Where's your mother? In the loony bin. I spend a year here and at the end of it I'm back where I started. No job and no money. I think it's perfect that it's been added onto the syllabuses for a lot of schools this year because it is very, very relatable. Um, a lot of the characters are relatable and they explore individual issues, but as a whole, um, it's good for young people, I think, to see what Belfast was like and what it's like now and the differences. And it lets you see, I think, as well, why the older generation are the way that they are because of the troubles and what they had to go through and what was normal to them is completely abstract to us. It raises questions now, like are we truly affected by how we're brought up and um, are people of those generations still affected um, and uh, by that time the troubles and, um, and, and I suppose the other question is, is do they uh, bring that into the young people who didn't even live then? You go on all the time as if you'd swallow a dictionary or something? A prophet without honour. What? Karl Marx had to leave the country at his birth. Was he your dad? You take nothing serious. I take a lot of things serious, but you're not one of them. You're as bad as the rest around here. You make jokes when someone tries to tell you the history of your own country. I got enough of that at school. I don't mean the great religious political con. I mean the true division of the working classes by the owners. The capitalists. Listen you, every morning I get up out of bed and look out of the window and the soldiers are still there. That's all the history I need to know. You need to know why they're there. I don't, Tommy. I just want them to go away. It's a really, really good local play. Um, I mean, it shows you quite a lot of what the actual situation was like in the 80s. You don't really get that. When you look at like old films and things, you don't get that read. But the fact that this is a play written at the time, about the time, I think gives you more of a sense and a feel as to what people were actually like and what they were actually struggling with. It's easy to just forget, you know, what was happening here. It wasn't, it wasn't great. Um, and I think this play kind of gets it right where it's supposed to be. It's a lot to do with drugs nowadays than anything, but I think if young people had like youth pro programmes, and it's just what we have in the play too, where you have bonds and you have connections, like, no, the kid, children now I don't have anything to do. And if, so, if everybody's going to be putting down a community, they're not going to see anything different. They're going to do exactly what people are saying. There's nothing better to do. This, like, the community needs something better. And they need something in place to get the kids off the street. No matter what decade it is, what year it is, you know, if you are poor, if you're unemployed, if you're from an area that maybe doesn't have a lot of um, opportunities, the issues are always going to be the same. It could be Belfast, it could be Birmingham, it could be Brighton. Um, but it's always going to be the same. Unemployment sort of creates issues that everyone has to deal with. When you sit and watch the play, you can see yourself in each and single one of them characters. You know that there's a lot more to glue sniffing, there's a lot more than joy reading, and there's a hell lot more of getting yourself into trouble. And Arthur, he spends a year in hospital and he gets £70,000. I wonder if the army like to shoot me. So does joy riding still happen today? Yes. It it does very much in full swing. In fact, I was a victim of, although I don't like to call myself a victim, um, of a, a hit and run uh, police chase at the end of July where two joyriders were being chased by police from North Belfast, hit down, hit a, a pedestrian and then chased across uh, East Belfast and hit me on the Newton Arch Road. So I'm actually lucky that, I was, that I'm here today. Uh,
directing Joyriders. The development of that into each of the different scenes that you do. So think of your characterisation and your... The great thing is, is I believe that uh, young people, uh, GCSE A-level students would absolutely love it because of the grittiness. Um, but right up to older people who will be remembering the times 30 years ago. The wonderful thing is, is it's a real mix of comedy and tragedy. And the brilliant thing about this is, is it shows us how no matter what we have gone through, in Northern Ireland around that time, we can still laugh at ourselves. So the play is on at the Grand Opera House Belfast from the 22nd of October to the 26th of October, two shows a day, 11 a.m. and 1.30. Um, and um, you can get any further information on apolloarts.co.uk.